I really like the game Striders. I like that it's so earnest about what it is. Like it just wants to be a game about snowboarding and it's not trying to sell you on some grand spectacle where you're going to leap over an Empire State Building or you're going to shoot off some fireworks as you do a bunch of pranks on people. It's not about destruction. It's about emergence in a sport, just an appreciation of riding down a mountain and learning how to do tricks. Your fingers become like your feet. So the right thumbstick is controlling how your feet are interacting with the snowboard as you glide down this mountain. And so for each jump, you're thinking ahead of time, like, how do I want to position my figurative feet in this world? How do I want to prime up this jump so that I successfully maneuver the exact trick that I want to do? And this is the kind of thought process that you can imagine most snowboarders go through, where it's like you're trying to plan ahead in order to execute. And it's that feeling of execution with each trick that's really quite special. And it's one of those things that was there with EA Skate. Back in the day, EA Skate, unlike something like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, was trying to make you connect with that feeling of being a skateboarder and actually finessing your way through each trick, not merely inputting a series of mapped out button presses in order to accomplish what otherwise appeared quite extraordinary. So in something like EA Skate, the tricks were difficult to pull off. Even the most minor of tricks, something like a kickflip into a grind, would in a game like Tony Hawk be a mere couple button presses and something like EA Skate you had to practice again and again and again how to do this and that's a type of game that sort of died off and shredders is bringing back that feel that feel of some of the most basic tricks being hard to do of you being able to fail on a trick that you've done hundreds of times before because you didn't quite get the habit down of how to move your fingers just right and in the right timing it feels like i'm investing in my own skills in this game it feels like i'm actually learning how to play much like learning how to snowboard i'm not merely just following instructions and so that skate oriented design with the controls really lends itself well to a game where you're just trying to relax into the state of mind to play. You're trying to get into the sport. You're trying to take it for what it is. It's not like SSX where it's all about spectacle. It's not like Amped. It's not like Riders Republic where it's all about joy, 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 joy. This game is about playing, like playing in the playground sense, playing in the sense of being with friends and just learning how to go down a hill, how to perform various tricks. And the story of the game sort of lends itself to that. It actually matches that same feeling. The story is about a bunch of snowboarders who just want to make it in the world. They're trying to go viral and they have to go viral by just learning from each other. And there's a sort of obsession with virality. There's an obsession with, with how much attention you can get from complete strangers. Has Flaggy Buster gone viral yet or what? Hell yeah, we've got like 50 likes already. 50? Yep. 50,000? <laughs> no, 50, like, like nearly double our last video. So good. Oh God. And this is a through line throughout the entire story of the game. So as you're going and you're snowboarding down this mountain and you're learning each trick and you're doing each mission, your ultimate goal is to become more and more popular. And I love that this game just captures that modern dread or that modern anxiety of just trying to somehow garner attention, which attention becomes equal to approval in many cases. This feeling like if I'm not getting the thumbs up of numerous strangers, then how do I know that I've really made it? How do I feel accomplished in my dreams or accomplished in my goals without having a bunch of people approve and letting me know. And this game is like oriented around that. All of the dialogue circles around getting more clicks, getting more views. There's a constant pressure underneath what's happening. Now, of course, this isn't a serious story in that way, though. It's not like the story is telling you, like, look at this drama of characters trying to make it in the world. It's presented in the form of absurdist comedy. There's a lot of fourth wall breaking humor in here where the game is making fun of the developers themselves. Yeah, I almost never wear this stuff. Why are you wearing it now man it's these lazy game developers they blew all their money on snowmobiles and parties and now i got stuck wearing goggles and a buff is making fun of that drive to go viral. I mean, as an indie game, they know what that feels like. They had to get people's attention. They had to stand out in a world of EAs and Ubisofts where these big AAA developers can just throw money, have a portion of their budget devoted to advertising. These indie developers had to somehow make it in their own way just by quality, just by passion. And that's one of the best things about this game is that it's like, it's just passion driving the game forward, driving the design. You don't need a AAA budget to stand out. You don't need a AAA budget to display your talent. You can just have good taste. You can just have love of what you're doing. In this game, you can tell that they love snowboarding. Like they really want you to appreciate it too. They want you to see the ways in which snowboarding down a mountain can be a kind of meditative act. There's a there's just a fun in perfecting tricks. There's a fun at just getting good step by step in little ways. Not ways that are grandiose, that are going to like cause you to leap over a moving truck. It's not like Forza Horizon where you're racing against warthogs and airplanes. 
airplanes. It's much smaller scale than that. But that also makes, on a smaller scale, it makes each moment to moment accomplishment feel significant and personal. And it's that personal element that really rings true throughout this whole game. It's an indie game where you can feel the kinks on the edges. You can feel the ways in which the budget was limited, but the passion was severe. The passion was genuine and forthright and pushing outside of its own bounds. The voice acting in many ways is amateur, but it's amateur in a purely endearing way. Like you have this kind of casual, genuine, joyful awkwardness of real interaction between these characters. Totally not. You're, you're killing it, dude. You're rolling your eyes right now, aren't you? How would you even know? I'm wearing goggles. The mystery of the goggles. <laughs> All right, let's get it. You feel as if it's a bunch of friends in separate booths just trying to give the best voice acting they can in order to compete in this realm of constant AAA developed entertainment. Just sitting in a booth trying to sound like they're outdoors, trying to sound like they're thrilled. That games like Ubisoft Riders Republic try to mimic. I mean like Riders Republic is a game where it's constantly embedded in memes and humor and trying to sound youthful. It's like the older guy like hey fellow kids you know. It's like this game actually feels young. It feels like developers really care about what they're doing. They want to just have you love snowboarding like they do. They want you to understand what it feels like to just be around friends. And like there's a lot of rough edges like the sound design is raw in terms of the sound effects like grinding through snow and hitting rocks is often it feels almost too loud. But that lack of cleanness also makes it feel real. I love the way that the sound sort of hits the edges, the barrier of decibel limit. You know, it, it feels like it wasn't streamlined for a mass audience. It feels like a game that is rough endearingly along the edges. There's a mission structure, but it's not too rigid. You can play it like a game where you just explore an almost open world mountain, where you're going down and you can sort of find the different nodes of each mission. You can play a co-op with friends, or you can just do a list of missions back to back and you can just jump from trick to trick to trick and each of the missions is really focused on accomplishing a single trick or two you're following someone and you're trying to mimic their style you're trying to do as well as they are or you're trying to do the same trick that they're doing or you're just trying to learn how to do one trick and again this is all this is all testament to the value of the controls in this game the controls are so tight that a whole mission can be devoted to just doing a single trick and that feels enough because it's not given to you outright the ease of use of snowboarding it's not making the trick one button press away. Instead what you're given is you're, you're given an understanding of the base mechanics so that you can maneuver into those tricks naturally. It's a relaxing game. It's a game that like really stands out and it's one of those, it's an independent game that it, so many can miss. You can see a game like this and it's like okay it's just another snowboarding game but it's like a genuinely excellent snowboarding game. And snowboarding games stand out among the various sports type games that can exist because there's something about the spaciousness that's integrated into the ground that you're sliding across. It lends it lends itself well to relaxation. It lends itself well to a chill affair. You as a snowboarder are just gliding. You're just on the mountain for yourself. And the controls of this game match that feeling. The sound of this game matches that feeling. The music is beat heavy and raw and continuous. and it makes it relaxing. It makes it so enjoyable just to cruise in this space. And this is an excellent, excellent snowboarding game. Don't miss this indie title just because it's an indie. Don't miss it just because it's small scale. Just because it, the graphics maybe aren't as high as they could have been. There's rough edges here and there all over the place. Don't let that be the thing that pushes you away from something that is otherwise a solid sports experience. Check it out. Shredders is pretty good.